Hello and welcome, my name is Buggerton at BoardGamer.co.uk and this is the Encyclopedia Factorio. This entry we shall be discussing transport belts. Transport belts are an invaluable tool when designing your factory. They require no power once built and work tirelessly to carry your goods to and from your different facilities and storage devices. They initially provide relief from the player having to manually transport items from location to location and, along with inserters, begin to allow the player the ability to start automating his setup. Starting the game, one begins with the ability to craft the most basic type, simply known as transport belts. Unless you're a veteran trying to challenge yourself to play through without one of the usually deemed necessary objects like transport belts, demon engineer, we're looking at you, then we'll want to build a very large number of these. So once assembly machines become available, consider this as a good thing to start making. Simply built out of iron plates and iron gear wheels, these can be built cheaply and quickly with just two assembly machines from your main iron supply setup, as shown here. Placement is simple. Pick the item up from your inventory or select it from your hotbar and place. Push R to rotate, either before placing or after it's already on the ground, and right click as usual will allow you to deconstruct and pick it up again. Any items lying on top of a transport belt when it's deconstructed will end up in your inventory. Transport belts have the capacity to carry goods and have two distinct sides. Inserters will always place goods on a specific side, namely the far side of the belt or to the right hand side if the belt is facing away from the inserter. Items can be picked up from either side of a belt, but if both are available then the side closest to the inserter will usually be favoured. It's possible to change which side an item is on with simple setups such as these. It's worth experimenting a little early on to get the feel for how belts behave. As you can see here, belts which come in from the side only place items on the side which they're entering from. You can use this to converge two different items onto the same belt, but keep them on separate sides from each other. Soon you'll start encountering issues where you'd like your belts to cross or move your goods more quickly in order to increase the throughput, or split their goods in two or more directions. Fortunately, we have just the thing for you. Logistics 1, 2 and 3 are researches available in the game which happen to be tiers 1, 2 and 3 respectively, requiring just a few science pack 1s or red pots for the first upgrade, green and red for the second, and the addition of blue pots for the third. The first first upgrade unlocks splitters and underground belts, the second unlocks red variants, and the third express variants of all three. Underground belts give you the ability to increase the complexity of your setup by having belts running over each other and allowing for much more flexibility. When placing the first end of an underground belt, items will stop when arriving, as the underground part is only considered to come into existence once the other end has been placed. Conversely, once deconstructed, either end will yield the contents of both that end and the entirety of what was on the underground belt as it ceases to be. Underground belts are somewhat abstracted and therefore any number of belts can cross perpendicular making it possible for some working but hideous messes. Belts can travel up to four tiles underground to be connected and naturally cannot have any other underground belts of the same colour in a line as they'll simply just connect to the nearest opposite facing end. But for some reason this is possible? What the frack, man? Anyway, pushing R on an underground belt switches its direction. Splitters, at their most basic, allow two inputs and two outputs, and will attempt to perfectly split into their two lanes whatever comes in. This can be used to balance two lanes evenly into two more, combine two lanes down into one without the laborious side loading like this, or alternatively split a single lane into two. Splitters will attempt to divide equally by alternating between which side goods come out of, but should one side be full, the splitter will open the other side to receive the full input until such a time as that side clears. Splitters will also maintain which side of the belt items were on. If both lanes fill up but only on one half of the lane, then the items on that half of the lane will back up and won't transfer onto the other side. This could be very useful in certain situations, such as this example, where batteries and steel are both on one line feeding into the blue pot research. They are also the two key ingredients in the flying robot frame, so this line can be split to provide these two item types to two different sets of facilities. In both cases, it's important to have the items on distinct sides of the belt, so the factories don't end up being being shut down because the belts get clogged with one type of the item and not the other, which could be seen here. Since the items weren't kept on distinct sides, then the factories are waiting for the batteries, but in the end, the line is just full of steel, so they'll never shift the steel because they can't get the batteries, and so on and so forth. Should you want single item types currently only occupying one side to utilise both, then there are ways around such as setups like this, but we'll cover that in depth during the balances and rebalances entry of the Factorio Encyclopedia. So that's the basics of belts and splitters. Now, later on, you'll start 
considering faster belts. Fast or red belts move at twice the speed, and express or blue belts move at triple the speed of their yellow counterparts. It becomes worth upgrading lines once you need to fit more on a belt at one time. If your product just isn't getting to those last factories, then you need to have more of it coming in. And eventually, even with a fully compressed line, you still might end up not getting all of those factories fed. Your solutions, therefore, are either to build more of the basic type of belt parallel to the original one, which is advisable in an early factory where you might not have the resources to build the costly faster belts, upgrade your lines to faster or express belts, or alternatively just do both. Remember that a faster belt, like a running tap, can push more product through your factory per second. So naturally, the drawback is that fast belts are quite expensive, coming in at a massive 11.5 iron per belt with a basic only using 1.5. You can have 7 belts and change for the cost of one fast belt. Express use another 10, coming in at 21.5, but also require lubricant, a product from the oil industry made from heavy oil. Naturally, this means you should only upgrade belt types when you really need to squeeze more products down a tight area. Underground belts increase from 17.5 iron to 57.5, and, and then a whopping 138 iron for the blue ones. These don't, however, require any oil. And then lastly, there's the splitters, which are the only type of belt to require copper. They need 7.5 copper along with a 16 iron for the basic type, 46 iron and 22.5 copper for the fast, and the express splitters need more along with both lubricant and the red advanced circuits, which in turn require plastics, a completely different end product from the oil industry. As such, focus early efforts on having more initial lines transporting your most prolific goods, such as iron plates, copper and green electronic circuits, which you can upgrade later, rather than having to rely on smaller lines, which will cost a much larger amount of your starting resources to upgrade, at a time where you're wanting to spend your resources probably on research and defence and the like. That concludes our entry on transport belts, splitters and underground belts. For more information, check out the inserters entry for how they interact with belts, and see the balances and rebalances entry for more info regarding the advanced belt management. Thanks for watching this edition of the Factorio Encyclopedia. If you have any questions, if you think I've left something out, or if you have any suggestions for new entries, then please leave a comment below or check out any one of the streams linked in the description. If you enjoyed us, please give us a like and subscribe to be one of the first to hear about new entries and videos. I've been Buggerton. Good evening.